Hi, I'm Leah, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do a boho blend on this dresser here, and I'm also gonna show you how to apply a furniture transfer. So first things first, I have already prepped this dresser, and I've applied a couple coats of Boss. Boss is a primer that helps you to eliminate bleed through on your, on your piece of furniture. And since this was an antique dresser, I went ahead and put a coat of Boss on it. The next thing I did is I taped my transfer over the top of it. This is called Latin Floral. This is from Dixie Belle. And I went ahead and laid it over the top of this dresser so that I can see the colors and I can see where it's gonna be positioned. Um, and I can kind of think through how I'm gonna paint it. So I'm gonna be using all the colors inspired by this transfer. We're gonna start at the bottom with some blues. We're gonna blend up into some pinks and we're gonna go into some yellows and oranges. So that's kind of the idea I have in my head but it may change as we get to painting on the dresser. So let's get started. So I'm gonna start on the bottom with antebellum blue and mermaid tail. I'm gonna go ahead and start by misting my brush. I do prefer using synthetic brushes for blending. Put the mermaid tail right here because it's the lighter color. My paint's just going on nice and smooth. Next color is antebellum blue. And I'm gonna start getting my pinks ready. So I'm gonna start with plum crazy because it's the darkest. We're gonna go into peony and I'm actually gonna start just blending the whole front right now and then move to the sides because my paint's drying a little bit too quick. I'm gonna open up my Daisy. And I'm also gonna open up my Dixie Belt um, Florida Orange and Terracotta. I have some left over in these jars, so I'm gonna use that. Very little amount, um, which doing this blended look, you don't need much paint. I have big jars but really you don't need, um, like the little eight ounce containers would be perfect if you're just going for a quick look like this. So I'm gonna come in with a little more mermaid tail. And I'm actually gonna come up a little higher with the antebellum blue. Kinda like coming in like this, okay? So it's like a triangle coming down and almost just framing it out just a bit. wipe my brush off. I'm really trying to keep my brush like I don't want the paint to mud up on it because that's when it gets frustrating because the colors just go to mud. So just wipe your brush with that cloth. I'm actually just going to add just a touch of daisy just because it feels right right here. And this is where I'm just going to start kind of having fun. I'm gonna go in with Plum Crazy. I'm just gonna pull a bit of purple. I'm gonna take Peony straight through here. I just wanna lighten, I want a lighter shade of pink. So right here, I'm just gonna add some water and just blend this out just a bit. Now this is my first coat, so I don't really need perfect blending. Um, we're gonna go with Florida Orange right here. Quite a bit of it. I'm gonna go in with Daisy. And this is gonna bring it all together. Wipe my brush, I'm not gonna dip it in any paint. I'm just gonna use what's on here with some water. At this point, I'm gonna grab a new brush to just kind of blend these colors out. 
So you can see it's super pretty, looks like a sunset. My goal right here at this point with this painting is to make a couple decisions. One, do I like the way it looks? Yes, I do. I like the colors. I like the way the colors are fading. Um, it looks pretty, it looks sunsetty. I'm gonna keep everything as is. Two, how am I gonna do my sides? I am gonna carry my color around the sides for this piece. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And number three, um, well, there really is no number three. I just wanted to tell you guys that what the second process will be after this dries in a couple hours, I'll come back through and I'll do the exact same process, just fine tune it a little more. And at that point, I'll probably use um, more clean brushes. I'll keep wiping my brush like I have been, but I'll also pick up new clean brushes. So when I'm blending, normally I use anywhere between two to six brushes that, um, you know, at a time while I'm blending. All right, so our paint has dried and I am ready to go forth with my second coat of blending. Now, my second coat will probably be my last coat. Um, I'm hoping I can get it right on the second coat. If I don't get it right on the second coat, I will go into a third coat just to make it look how I want it to look. Now, I want you to remember that I have been doing this for a long time. So I will probably get it right within the second or third coat of blended colors. If you're a beginner or you've, you haven't been doing this very long, it might take you anywhere between two and seven, maybe even 10 times to get it right. When I first started, it would take me, you know, it would take me anywhere between two to seven times to get that blended coat to a point where I felt like um, it was something I was proud of. So I just want you to know that it just takes some practice. So before we, be, we begin, I'm just going to point to the colors and tell you what they are. And they will also be linked below so that you can directly find this paint. Now I am using Dixie Belle paint, which is, which is my favorite paint for blending. It is a great paint for blending. It's a great paint for layering and creating these gorgeous boho looks. So we have mermaid tail right here, antebellum blue. Those two are kind of simultaneously blended together. Right here we have Plum Crazy and Peony, and then we come into uh, um, Daisy, Daisy, and Florida Orange. So those are our colors. Let's get started. I'm using synthetic brushes, and I also have my spray mister. I'm gonna mist my surface just to kind of get, um, just so my paint is, is a little bit lubricated so that I can get my blend going really well. I'm also gonna go ahead and mist my brush. And I'm gonna start with my mermaid tail right here. I just have a tiny bit of paint on my brush. I'm not loading it up. I wanted to add a highlight of the mermaid tail on the bottoms of my feet. And the reason is, is I'm creating a triangle, which is very appealing to the eye. Light mermaid tail, mermaid tail, mermaid tail, and it creates a, do you see it? The triangle. Now I'm gonna go in with my antebellum blue and I'm just gonna start with just a little bit, okay? I'm gonna start in this corner. Okay, so I'm gonna start working my paint over here a little bit by wetting it. I'm actually gonna grab a clean brush and I'm gonna start working these colors in. And as you can see, when I grab the clean brush, um, the transition starts happening a little bit more smooth, keeping my brush clean. So really what I'm doing right now is I'm using my clean working brush and I'm just working the paint into each other. Okay, now I'm grabbing my dirty brush again, we'll call it that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get right here and I'm gonna spray this just to make it a little bit, just to lubricate my paint a little bit. I'm starting with Peony right here and I'm gonna work it into my Plum Crazy that's already there for that lighter, that lighter pink look, that nice transition. We're gonna set our 
working or our dirty brush down and we're gonna grab our clean brush which is still very clean okay there's a little purple on there but it's not gonna matter and we're just gonna use water and the paint that we have on here to blend this so we're gonna start down here with our pink may have been beneficial to work from the top down but my brain always wants to work from the top up so that might be something I try on the next piece I do so that the drips don't affect me so much went ahead and dropped my clean brush in the antebellum blue. Um, I'm gonna keep on, at this point, I'm, um, my, my drips are kind of bothering me, uh, the, the overspray of the water. So I'm just gonna kind of try to balance it out a little bit and, and it's okay. I, I do kind of want some of these pinks to fall through. And so like right here, I'm actually liking the way that looks now. Um, and I'm just gonna come over here. You can kind of see that drip a little bit. And I'm just gonna just touch a little antebellum blue in here. And I'm just gonna kind of go over it really lightly. But on the sides, we're gonna go ahead and work from the top down to avoid this happening. But I wanna just take a moment and say that I like the front. I'm very happy with it. My transition here, um, it could be better but there's gonna be a transfer right here. So it's gonna look fine. So I'm going to leave it. I like the purple through here. I didn't even have to pull out purple paint, you know, pink and blue, made my purple and I'm very happy with it. So I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> Stop messing with it. And I'm gonna to turn to the side so that we can work on the side. And from the side, we're gonna work from the top down to avoid the dripping and see if that helps. All right, you guys, our dresser, base is dry. I put one coat, actually two coats of um, coffee bean on the top. Just, I just painted it. It's like a, it's a coffee bean brown and we're going to let that dry. And while that dries, we're going to add our transfer. So our transfer is one of the new ones from the bells and whistles line from Dixie Bell. This is one of the full design transfers. It's my favorite one of the collection. It's called Latin floral. And, um, we saw it in the beginning and now we're going to go ahead and add it to our dresser so it comes in the four sections and i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to use some tape and even out i'm actually going to use some scissors i'm going to cut this edge off and then i'm going to put some tape on and just make sure that i like the positioning of it and then i'm going to show you how to adhere so i just cut the border off to make it smaller so that i can see the positioning of it a little bit better so I'm gonna go ahead and do that on number two right now as well. I'm gonna use my frog tape. Um, I am using the yellow frog tape because it is specifically for freshly painted surfaces. Um, and this is pretty fresh, right? We just did it a couple hours ago, so I'm gonna use the fresh paint one. If I, if I waited 24 hours, I would probably just use the regular tape, but I just wanna be um, extra cautious. So I have it laid out. Um, I am gonna move it around. I think I'm gonna actually pull them a little closer together, cutting into this right here. And I'm thinking, I really don't wanna move it up, um, but some of my bottom is going to get cut off, which is okay. But I am gonna move them in a little closer together. Okay, so since I don't want that space, I'm gonna um, come in a little closer on here. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the sheet. Okay, this white backing, we're gonna toss that. Um, and this, this positioning is the most important because this is where everything else will kind of line up from. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I have it right in the center of that little drawer split. Down a little so I can see my whole design. And having this even will go make the whole dresser even. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna lay it on and leave my tape. And then it comes with this little stick. I'm gonna use this stick to go ahead and adhere my transfer. 
So I'm gonna start right here, giving it pressure. Okay, so that took me a little over 10 minutes to put on. Um, so the four sheets will probably take me about 40 minutes to put on. Right here, it's floating a little bit um, because that's gonna have to get folded into the crease and right here it is too. So I'm gonna go grab um, something to push it in, which I'm probably gonna grab a rubber spatula. So it's the silicone um, scraper, spreader, whatever. I'm gonna just kind of use my hand push this down, make sure it's secure. And then I'm just gonna use this to push it into the crevices and the crack right here between the drawer so that it doesn't really break the transfer, but it just kind of pushes it in. I need to like raise this a little bit. These transfers are really strong. Doesn't wanna, it's a little bit tougher to break. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. All right, so we're done. Our transfer is on. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these creases. It took me about an hour to put this whole thing on. So I'm gonna take a break um, and think about how I wanna finish this and then we will be back uh, to see the whole thing. Hey guys, we're getting ready to finish up this piece and I wanna give you some really good pointers on how to make sure that your transfer stays on your piece. So first thing first, first things first is I went ahead and I took some time and I just pressed my transfer in. I made sure that it was really secure on my piece, that it's not really peeling up anywhere. The goal is before you put your top coat on, you wanna make sure there's no little cracks where water can get under, your top coat can get under because that will pull your transfer up. So I took my nail and I ran it around all these edges here, all the little crevices, you could use like a silicone spatula, that works great. And then on just the bottom edges, like right through here, I used a sanding sponge. Now anytime I'm decoupaging with decoupage paper or with transfers, I usually try to cut it with sandpaper because it just leaves a cleaner finish. So um, I went along all my edges here, just on the bottom, so I didn't do the tops. I did put a coat of uh, coffee bean, which is the same color I used up here on all the drawer edges just to make them look a little bit more clean. Uh, when I, my client opens this piece, I want this edge to be clean. Now, you, can, you can't even tell that that's painted from the front. Next thing is we are gonna use satin clear coat to seal this transfer. Now, I've used lots of different transfers and this is my go-to product for sealing a transfer. Um, it is a little bit slower moving of a product, as you can see, than Gator Hide, which is a more durable finish, okay? So Gator Hide moves a little quicker, um, it dries a little quicker, and sometimes the Gator Hide or any kind of uh, polycrylic type product that is super durable 
will affect your transfer. So what I do is I use satin clear coat over my entire piece and then I'll go over it with gator hide if I want that extra protection. So make sure that you're sealing your transfers with satin clear coat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do an example right here on the front. I like to wear a glove so that I don't get all the, uh, the sealer on my hands. I'm using my blue sponge and I'm just gonna give you a tip on how to clean it. Afterwards, what I'll do is I'll go and I'll squeeze all the excess out into the garbage and then I'll go right inside and I'll use hot water and Dawn dish soap and I'll just clean my sponge out and I'm good to go. Now I am gonna go ahead, as we begin, I'm gonna spray my sponge with some water. And the reason I'm gonna spray it with some water is because it's gonna, the sponge is gonna fill up with whatever you're putting in it. So I wanna give it a good base of water so that I don't waste any of my satin clear coat product. So as you can see, it's not dripping, but it's, it's, it's damp. All right, um, I've taken my satin clear coat and I've put it in a bowl. I like to put my satin clear coat in a bowl so that if, uh, I, so that I don't, um, the paint stays on, but I don't like to contaminate my jars, my clear coat jars. My paint jars, I don't care about. Um, my satin clear coats, I wanna make sure that I don't contaminate it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dip my sponge in like this, and then I'm just gonna kind of scrape a little bit of that excess off. And I'm gonna start down here at the bottom and I'm just gonna pull it across. And with the satin clear coat, you have just a little bit more working time than you do with the gator hide. So that's another reason why I prefer it on this first initial coat. Even if I don't have a transfer, I always use satin clear coat first. So I'm dipping and I'm scraping a little bit of the excess off. And I'm actually gonna pull this drawer out because I wanna keep these clean if I can um, and do those in one streak. So just making sure my transfer's on. And I'm pulling it across. Dip, scrape. And as you can see here, I have lots of working time with the satin clear coat. I'm not gonna do my edge here. I will finish this edge with an oil-based wax. Big Mama's Butter works great just on these edges because as you see here, it's gonna, um, I'm actually gonna pull this out first. But these drawers are rubbing a little bit. Uh, this is an older piece and sometimes you it comes with issues of the drawers rubbing, which this one has. So that is just something you have to roll with when you're working with older, older furniture. There's always something that isn't perfect. Okay, so our satin clear coat is on. So now I will let this dry and I will probably add at least one more coat of satin clear coat to this transfer to make sure it's extra protected. Now, if I decide that I wanna apply gator hide, I can. I can, after two coats of satin clear coat, I can apply gator hide over the top of my transfer, over my whole piece, whatever it is. But first, 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 and always to get less, to have less frustration with your top coating, use satin clear coat first. So I hope that was super duper helpful. Um, I'll be finishing up this video with some awesome pictures. I'm gonna get this staged. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for following along with this process with me. I really appreciate you being here. And if you guys have any questions, please drop them below and I'll be happy to answer. Have a great one and happy painting.